News 6 anchor Ginger Gadsden joins us live now tonight at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School to take us back to that day. Ginger. Guys, it is a day we would all like to forget, but quite frankly, it is the reason we are dedicating an entire day to a generation under fire because we can't nor should we forget the day one person was allowed to walk into this high school on Valentine's Day and break the heart of an entire community. February 14th, 2018, Valentine's Day. For much of the day at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, the sound of laughter and affectionate chatter filled the halls. Students were excited, many planning their after-school get-togethers and dates. After all, this was a day about special friendships and love. And that's how it was, until it wasn't. 911, what is your emergency? A day that began with such hope and promise ended in tragedy and tears. Stoneman Douglas High School is being shot up. It's being shot up. Are you at the school? My son is in Stillman Douglas High School. He said he heard noises and pop, and he thinks there's a shooting going on at the school. I love you. I love you. It's going to be fine. Can you hide from there? Can you play dead? I think we got shots fired. Also, shots fired. 1200 building. Did he shoot? Stay dead. Halls once filled with anticipation were now filled with the choking smell of smoke, not from fire, but from the fury of an AR-15 rifle. Police say Nicholas Cruz, a former student well known at Stoneman for his troubled past, had no love in his heart that day when he entered Building 12 on campus. Fourteen students and three faculty members were killed. Seventeen others were wounded. I freaked out. I figured it wasn't a drill. We met Margie Starnes at Metro Diner just outside of Parkland last week. She had two daughters at Stoneman that day, one a sophomore, the other a senior. They were reunited hours after the shooting. One year later, Starnes still gets choked up when thinking about the parents who will never see their kids again. <laughs> it's every parent's worst nightmare. Mine were okay and their closest friends and family were okay. <clears throat> but it affected everyone. The shooting has left a lasting impact on this community, and a year later, there are reminders everywhere, including on campus. A memorial sits out front. The fence is covered with banners showing signs of support. And there is the building where it happened. Classes are no longer held in the three-story building. It is a crime scene, protected at all times now by deputies. And while hearts in this friendly community are still hurting and healing, there is hope on the horizon. Hope lawmakers will listen to the young voices emerging from this tragedy so something like this will never happen again. And, you know, guys, it is just so telling how that day has been woven throughout this entire community. I was just setting up for our live shot, getting ready to do this 4 o'clock report, when two freshmen stopped me to ask me what I was doing. And they wanted me to know that they, too, were impacted, even though they're freshmen, because the middle school is on campus. They said they had to watch through their window that day as all of that unfolded. So here they are, freshmen today, and they are still feeling the lasting impact of that, so much so that they told me that they are noticing a visit visible absence of other students and even some of the teachers are not in classes today and possibly not this week. So as we go throughout the course of today talking about Generation Under Fire, I'm going to share some stories of some seniors who were in the building when it happened in the room where Nicholas Cruz shot and killed two people. They are both now freshmen at the University of Central Florida. They have two very different perspectives. I'll talk about that when I see you a little bit later on. The movement inspiring two local high school students to speak up as well. This time in the form of a film getting thousands of views online. Yeah, the two local teens speaking to News 6's Nadine Giannis with their message to America from Generation Z. Dear America, I started high school today. The doors are lined with coats of armor. An officer stands with a firearm and children scan the streets for predators. Uncertain footsteps down our crowded hallways, waiting to be the next victim. It's a feeling that we, we just don't know what to do. Dear America, my school had its first lockdown. We were told to hide in the corner, silent. Waiting for the attacker through a thin wall. Why do we wait in the shadows? Why do we wait to be shot? Wow, this, 
This could really happen to me. Dear America, how many final texts will students have to send to their parents under a desk for us to be safe again? I think there's never been a better time for our generation to speak up. And local high schoolers Molly Smith and Sage Croft are the voices of Generation Z. I know a lot of the adults are afraid to talk about gun violence, but the more it happens, the more we need to. It's just the left screaming at the right and the right screaming at the left, and we can't, we need to come together to find a solution to this. The idea came from Mount Verde Jr. Molly Smith writing a poem after the Parkland shooting. I think just walking around school every day and seeing the flag at half mast more than it was at the top was something that, that really hit me. And these are all like lines. Yes, they're all real lines that are in the poem. The imagery in the poem mirroring students' real fear walking the hallways at school. So real, they turned it into a film. Dear America, a school near me was attacked on Valentine's Day. I watched a television in horror, blood boiling in my body as I saw the death toll rise. It all came from personal experiences. Using their own classmates as volunteers and classrooms as sets to express what gun violence looks like through the eyes of a child. What would you want this film to accomplish? Ideally, the goal for this. Well, I think the goal for this film is to spark a conversation. Dear America, when will you start listening? When will my words be more than just noise to you? It's definitely being normalized over time, where it's not unexpected for these kind of gun violence to occur. So I feel like we really need to open that conversation up. Dear America, please write back soon. With love, Generation Z. Yeah, Lisa and Matt, Valentine's Day 2018 has profoundly changed the way Caitlin Jezanowski sees just about everything. She still has nightmares about the day Nicholas Cruz shot into her classroom, killing two of her classmates. But she says she refuses to let that day define her future. Caitlin Jezanowski is an impressive college freshman. She's smart, ambitious, and athletic. And like most 19-year-old college students, just trying to navigate her way through freshman year at UCF. But she has experienced something many of us pray we never will. Here's what we know right now. This happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Caitlin was inside one of the classrooms when Nicholas Cruz opened fire last Valentine's Day. When I got to fourth period, the last thing I remember, they, well, they were handing out carnations, actually, for Valentine's Day. And then the shots came, the first set. And we all kind of looked at each other like what, like in a panic. And, we, and then everyone dove and separated into different corners. So I ran to the corner diagonal from the door, which there's a computer cart there. And I moved the computer cart and three of us ended up getting behind the computer cart. And as soon as we got down there, the shots came through our door. Quick thinking to get behind a computer cart likely saved her life. But it was too late for two of her classmates. Like the next thing you know, I look up and Helena and Nick are right in front of me. And the first thing I do is grab Helena's hand. Um, and I tried to check her pulse, and I couldn't find anything. Within minutes, 17-year-old Helena Ramsey and 17-year-old Nick DeWarrett were dead. Caitlin held Helena's hand, trying to reassure her. She was leaning against the wall, um, unconscious. Um, so I grabbed her hand, and I was um, telling her it was going to be okay, and I was um, stroking her hair and everything. So. Yeah, but did you kind of know? Yeah, I think I did, but I just wanted to, I had to keep checking just in case. But when the SWAT came in and checked her, um, he shook his head, no, my stomach dropped. That day forever changed how Caitlin sees the world and how she reacts when she's out in it. Everywhere I go, I have to see, like, if something happened, um, an exit or what I would do. Like, I have to have a plan in mind. Um, and it's kind of just, like, an automatic thing. I just, like, look around and be like, okay, check, check. And if the shooter thought his act of cowardice would give him power over people like Caitlin, not quite. You feel stronger after something like that? Yeah, I do. And what sure. way? Um, emotionally, I feel like I see life on a more positive aspect. Um, I try to see, I try to spread love and like see everything more positively. Um, I'm also not afraid as, as many things as I was before. Um, I think if I can get through that, then I can get through most things. And back out here live at Parkland, 
She is definitely a tough young lady. She knew all along she wanted to have a career where she could help others, and that day helped her decide that she would go into nursing, and I think that is a fitting field for a young lady who really was heroic on that day. Back to you. And Matt, that student says she was waiting for one of those bullets to hit her as she cowered and hid under a desk in that classroom. Here is her story of survival. Do you think often about that day almost a year ago? Oh, every single day. It always crosses my mind, um, multiple times actually. Uh, you know, I could just be doing something as small as just driving my car and I could think about how I was just driving my car that, that day to school and everything changed. One year later, Katie Krakow is still haunted by what happened. Katie says she thought the gunshots were all part of a drill they had been warned about. I thought it was a drill all the way up until he started shooting into our class. Um, we kept getting a heads up that there was going to be a SWAT team to come in and shoot blanks in our school for a drill. So that's what I thought it was the entire time. I just thought it was the SWAT team coming in and shooting blanks until the way I actually realized was um, when he was actually shooting in the glass on the door it obviously shattered. Um, so I noticed by that that that's a little weird. Like at first I was like, wow, like I can't believe they're really going all out with this drill. And then all of a sudden there was so much smoke in the air. And I was like, this doesn't look right to me. And there's this horrible smell and you know, everybody was screaming because we didn't know what was going on. Katie says it all seemed surreal from the bodies to the smoke in the air to feeling the building was crumbling all around her. All the dust that you could possibly think of on those walls were coming out of the walls and the walls were literally like vibrating. Like it felt like the entire room, the ground, everything was shaking. When the dust settled, talk turned to who could have done something so sinister. Then Katie heard the name Nicholas Cruz. So when you learned that it was him? I wasn't surprised at all. Because? Because he's crazy. He's always been crazy. I mean, he used to do stuff in school that would just be so violent. He would try to sell knives at school. He'd bring knives to school. He'd be an interruption in the classrooms all the time or at lunch. We used to have silent lunch all the time because of him. When you heard it was him, it was like nobody was really surprised. And that's the sad part. Sad indeed because Katie says something like this probably could have been prevented because Nicholas Cruz was well known to be a troublemaker. The other thing I want to mention is Katie credits one of her classmates for saving her life. She says when she gets panicked, she freezes. And if, had, if it had not been for one of her classmates grabbing her and pulling her under the desk, she said 40 seconds later, that's when the bullets came ringing through her classroom door. She said if it were not for that student who grabbed her, she wouldn't be able to tell her survival story.